top half of your view is the virtual environment, whether sitting um, on the tarmac, um, about to start up the, the aircraft and then taxi and take off, or you're up in the air, you know, um, the VR part is very immersive. However, you want to be able to see what you are operating in. Final goal is actually total immersion. So for a start, the simplest way, and I suspect many people are doing, is using the mouse and monitor, maybe a track IR to control the head movement. So you use a mouse and a monitor, right? No VR, and you don't have a physical cockpit. So mouse and monitor. Just clicking around everything with a mouse. The most basic way of flying. That is okay to some extent, but if you really want to get serious and enjoy more immersion, then we have to do this um, VR still without a physical cockpit. And then in the VR, you use the mouse to click on every button and switch, which I suspect a lot of people doing using VR to fly uh, is doing so using a mouse. It is more um, immersive than looking at a monitor. You look around and you're surrounded in the environment, which is cool. Now it's more immersive in VR but we need to precisely click everything with a mouse. So let's take a step further. Hand tracking. So there are various ways to do hand tracking. You may use a VR glove or use the uh, leap motion um, hand tracking device thing or now the quest 3 it can also do hand tracking all right um, and we'll look at the steps to how to enable hand tracking in dcs such that it can sort of operate the uh, the switches so kudos to mnemonic flies dcs this guy uh, thanks to him we now know the four steps to how to make it hand tracking work for the quest 3 it's kind of works so the first step is in your quest 3 headset itself okay you have to go to this system developer and then turn on all of this next on your desktop you want to go to settings beta and turn on this developer runtime features all right the third one is your virtual desktop app in the quest headset you want to come down to streaming and make sure this is checked forward tracking data to PC. All right. And lastly, when you are in DCS, you have to launch it in the VR mode uh, with your VR headset on. If not, this will not appear. Okay. So don't use controllers, use trackers and select this no pointers you're not trying to use your hand or controllers like a mouse um, so with all this set you should be able to now use your hand to push buttons and uh, flip some toggles f1800 hand tracking pushing buttons is fine as you can see 
flipping toggles is tricky, turning knobs doesn't really work. It just moves randomly. So MFDs, buttons, any turn of knobs just doesn't work. So for the A10, we're trying to flip a toggle here. It takes many tries. It's consistently like buttons are working. That's about it. And even then it needs to be very precise. So at least it's working for the A10 and F18 on it. I guess anything that is done by DCS itself. So this one is RASPAM, so it doesn't work. I haven't tried Apache and F16, but um, I heard um, DCS modules are working. Now this one, it's still without um, pass through. You now have a VR headset and a cockpit, but because you don't have pass through, you cannot see what you are touching, right? So this is um, a bit challenging. A lot of things needs to match. The position and the size of everything has to be close to be a close match in order for you to kind of think you are operating the right switch and not try and error this is for the sake of you pressing the button right the physical button the satisfaction of a tactile feedback however you still cannot really see what you are touching if unless you are peeping through the nose gap all right using a virtual hand and touching the physical switches okay here we try to match the cas panel switches panel size everything have to match we here we have the pass through to compare the position but if you don't have pass through and your position and size are not perfect you will land up at the wrong place touching the wrong switches now mixed reality with a cockpit so this is the best of both worlds the roughly top half of your view it's the virtual environment, whether sitting um, on the tarmac, um, about to start up the, the aircraft and then taxi and take off, or you're up in the air, you know, um, the VR part is very immersive. However, you want to be able to see what you are operating in the cockpit. So the pass through comes in handy to let you see exactly what you're touching you can see your hands landing at the right place you can see the switches that you're turning of toggles that you're flipping whatever it is as immersive as it gets okay short of sitting in a real cockpit this is um, the best arrangement possible so in conclusion, if you have a physical cockpit that matches the aircraft that you love to fly, you can operate all the switches and with ease and not fumbling around in VR. With pass through, you can, you can feel and touch and see everything, right? And yet enjoy the, um, the virtual world around you for total immersion. Again, this is the holy grail of flight sim.